We've been hunting the coastline of Louisiana all season and have made new friends along the way. This season has reminded me once again that we can't control the ducks, we can't control the weather, but we sure as hell can control the people we surround ourselves with. Visiting these camps, meeting new crews, and following them in their outdoors has shown me that I'm not alone in the belief that it's the people that keep us coming back season after season. Now it's time to bring it back home to Bayou Blatt with the camp and crew that start us on this journey. Y'all ain't ready? Hey, hey, we're ready. Hey. Never ready. We got this fresh hog meat that the boys shot down in Venice when they were down there. And so we're going to make us a nice spaghetti tonight with a little hog meat, a little trinity. We're going to bring it all together with a little tomato paste and some tomatoes and onions. Ooh, it's going to be real good. While we were cutting some brush, we got these uh, champignons off these willow trees. Man, I tell you what, you saute them down, you talk about real good stuff right there. About time to add these onions, bell peppers, celery, and a little trinity. Get it going, yeah, let's go. We got it all going on tea. We sweating this together. We're gonna make us a sauce here in a minute, and we're gonna let that just cook on down. Ooh, ooh. ooh that's gonna be good. While that meat sauce cooks down, Junior's preparing a homestyle cornbread. Jay lends a helping hand to Denny, our on-set photographer. Sell it. Sell it. Bring it a little bit closer. Look at that one. You want the noodles? Come over the top. Come over the top. Oh, not like that? I think I'm breaking it down. Hey, hey, umbrella's a bad looking, son. Cut, cut. Wait, this is my apparatus. Umbrella's a bad looking, son, man. <laughs> Ain't coming in my boat. Some people's arms get tired, Jimmy. That's bad luck, Jimmy. What? Oh, no. Umbrella's open inside. This ain't an umbrella, it's a yeah, ladder. It's an umbrella. It ain't comfortable just holding this out here like this. Fine, if somebody cooks something you can eat around here. Uh -huh. This morning, Junior J and I are in pursuit of blue and teal that have been holding on this lease for weeks. We're taking our chances in a new spot where we can use the natural cover of a flotant to our advantage. I like this little spot, this little island's nice. Sean, Shane, and Jesse, on the other hand, will be hunting the old reliable spot that typically yields productive ringneck hunts. I like that wind. I think we'll, I think we'll do pretty good this morning. You know, the lease has been sitting for a few days with no one hunting. Get those birds a little time to rest out here and hopefully it pays off. Should be good. It's been a while since we hunted with wind, so we can actually dictate what the birds are gonna do a little bit better today. Where Jay and them are right now, he's in a little spot. It's like a little slough. They got a hole at the end of it. It's a little teal hole. You're gonna hear them shoot a little bit more than us at the very beginning. And then we'll be all right. It won't take us long to catch up. I don't know where to look right here. They come back around. Shoot. Yeah, shoot. Well, I was going to let them. You said, I thought I heard you say, I'm talking about right another here, flop. Right 
Nice shot, Jay. Right here. <laughs> All right. Go shoot. That's how it's gonna be, huh? Mm-hmm. I reckon. <laughs> hey, right here, three at the top. Can't oh, get him! Get him! Get him! Can't shoot over. We're gonna need, we're gonna need more shells if we start if we keep shooting like this. Talk about a complete turnaround from spec hunting out west. He's teal flying hard, fast, and from everywhere, and not giving any signs by calling. We gotta get our act together with shooting. Oh! Please, that's right at us. Got one on this side. Ooh, center, center it up. Nice Jay. Nice shot, Jay. There you go. I like to talk to you like that. The boys are banging over there. <laughs> we had a good feeling that little teal hole was gonna be really good. That's why Jay and Jay and Chef and them got in there. It, hopefully they get some real good stuff. Oh, he's he's gonna die. Blaring at the mojo. Won't we just shoot it? <laughs> Not smart, but right in the center. And mojo, you wanted to shoot? No. Shot it. Got some holes in the <laughs> holes in the wing. You know what? They make them all right now. Oh shit! This is fun, huh? Good shot, Jay. Look, let's sing it right there, Jesse. <laughs> got some birds back here now. Look at it right here. You got one coming right at you, Jesse. <laughs> oh, it's in your bread basket. After Hurricane Ida, we uh, they were giving out MREs. So we got an MRE pizza, and John Paul's about to do a review on it. We got a single coming. Oh, look, he's gonna bend right back to us. Oh! <laughs> when you stood up the boat rock and it threw him off. <laughs> Almost fell. <there. laughs> and yeah, that boat rock. Oh. That's our limit, boys. This morning early, they were kind of buzzing around us. They weren't really getting in on tight on us. We started waiting for our right shot. They were coming right up that butt, over that mojo, and Back. lights out. Nice. Lights out. Very nice, huh? They don't hit the water quite like them speckle bellies do, but it's still a whole bunch of fun. So. Came down to home, Louisiana. We're in the duck blind. We have our MRE. We're going to heat this up. Pepperoni pizza with cheese and sauce. So pretty straightforward. I'm going to have Jay pop it in the mic. And by mic, I mean some sort of heating package where you add water and a chemical reaction happens and heats this pizza up. So, Jay. Yeah, so you fill the water up to here. And you... You put the pizza ooh, on. Ooh. I'm on right here. Nice. All right, I got that's... smoke coming out the heater. I got smoke. I got fire in the blonde. Ah, oh, it's hot. You got a new pope. <laughs> As I was making the pizza, ducks came in. Forgot one very important step. In theory, they should both be in here. But way too hot now. So we need two more birds. It's about 7:30. So I mean, only been shooting for an hour, and uh, I don't know. It's starting to just like trickle in. So we're hoping that we get just a couple more in, and those couple don't leave, and we'll be out of here. A single out front. Stood Drake Bluewing. Mm -hmm. Nice shot. Shot. Come right behind us here. 
Left side banking in. Oh, get him. Get him, get him, get him, get him. Get him. We'll eat this, uh, eat this MRE. Pick up some birds. Pick up some birds. So we have our limited ducks and we want to pop out of that pond because give as much rest to that pond as possible before we hunt it tomorrow. So we brought the pizza into a little bayou off, to the, off the cut. And uh, it's nice and warm, still warm from the pack. I mean, it's not blazing hot, right? But we're gonna give this a shot, split it up between the boys here. Yeah, see what this is about. So, I mean, so far it looks nice and golden. Got a good undercarriage from what I can tell. Oh yeah, look at that. I mean, that is a Sicilian crouton. A Sicilian slice or grandma slice if I ever saw it. Look at that thing. MRE style grandma slice. One bite, everybody knows the rules. Everybody Jeez. knows the rules. Mm. That may be one of the more disappointing MREs I've had. Oh, dry, doughy. I can't talk. Too dry. Mm. It's hard to swallow. Makes you also realize that how good you got it when things are good that you don't have to eat stuff like this. One, two. Bucket this, of ranch, this one, these, Let's pull one out for the pool here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if the catfish are gonna bite that thing. <laughs> let's go get some breakfast and then go chumpy on. So we're back at the camp after a really great hunt. Every blind did really well, but now we need to fuel up for some little champignon hunting or wild mushroom hunting throughout these bayous along dead willow trees in the marsh. And I have some bacon from Rabbitohs um, out of right around Lake Charles when we were in Southwest Louisiana. So basically just bringing that back home and cooking up for the boys for breakfast this morning. Got some Rabbitohs? Mm -hmm. So the bacon fat is in there and I'm gonna just take the speckle belly boudin that we made yesterday start frying it up in that fat. Once the rice has started to crisp up in that bacon fat, I got two bunches of green onions. The whites and the greens gonna go right in. That gradu on the bottom. Oh yeah, you gotta scrape that gradu off. All right, I'm gonna shut it off. I'm gonna start cracking eggs. That's it, boudin scrambled egg fold over for my buddy Bags. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna get fueled up and go pick some mushrooms. Uh-huh. We're about to start the hunt for the wild elusive champion. Going mushroom picking. So certain time of year out here, usually during hunting season, wild mushrooms grow on willow trees. See some prime selects right here. Looking like we can get there pretty easy. Ooh, that's close. The things we do for mushrooms, huh? A little wet sock is worth it. Uh, I don't know, Jay. Looking pretty. Pretty old? Pretty old. Yeah. For the first hard freeze, you can find wild oyster mushrooms studded along the banks around freshwater in Louisiana. These mushrooms grow from dead willow trees and they peak within a 24 hour window. With that said, you may have to make a few stops before you find a fresh pile in good enough shape to harvest. The mushroom should be firm, not soggy. It should also look off white without any blemishes or brown spots. When you find a cluster worth harvesting, Use a sharp knife to cut the stalk close to the tree it's growing on. Put the 300 pound man climbing on the willows. Great idea. Shake's not a champion tour. We might have to pick him up, huh? Nah, I'm gonna, I'm a limbo shimmy underneath this. Oh, 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 oh,
Over or under? Oh. <laughs> Be quick before Big Bear to Wood. Big Bear. Now tell me what I say. I get those young. Oh yeah, these are beautiful. Come up a little bit more, Jay. Beautiful, beautiful, perfect. Just what the doctor ordered. Champion is like like frogging during the day. <laughs> <laughs> they don't run from you. They don't jump, <laughs> and they delicious. Yeah, that's right. Fried champion appetizers. Juice gonna fry those up tonight. Got some speckle belly roasted. Gonna be delicious. All these units, these units are going fast. We gotta keep, <laughs> we can't the keep ju up, Bruce. Juice and Shane's kitchen gotta tighten up. Supply and demand, Bruce. Tonight, Juice is frying up the wild mushrooms we harvested earlier today. And I'll be cooking up a recipe my dad used to cook at home and at the duck camp. This is my last duck camp dinner before becoming a father. In a couple of weeks, my wife and I are expecting our first child. This weekend in particular has me feeling nostalgic for a duck recipe that my dad used to cook for special occasions. His persistence in making this dish to impress guests stuck with me. And tonight, I'm passing it down to you. And so what we have here, um, that's a whole plug speckle belly goose with the furred wing on. We're gonna just debreast this goose. Take some paper towel and dry off that skin really well. Season the fat side of your waterfowl and add it into a cold black iron pot. Render that fat from the breast using a slow and low heat. Once the fat has rendered, add butter and flip the breast to lightly roast the flesh side. Keep in mind, the main goal is to not overcook the meat. Once roasted, remove the breasts, crank up the heat, and add your mushrooms into the fat in your pot. I'm gonna give them a quick turn. See how they're already picking up all that gradu and all that brown butter? Once your mushrooms are roasted, remove them from the pot and set aside with your meat. Keeping the fat in the pot, it's time to do the same thing with your apples. Oh yeah, that's what we're looking for. You know I couldn't cook a recipe without putting a nice handful of yellow onions and that's what's gonna be next. In your black iron pot, add diced yellow onion and saute for a few minutes before adding another knob of butter and brown sugar. Cook your brown sugar and butter together to make the foundation of the sauce. This method is sometimes called a sugar root when talking about Cajun cooking. Next ingredient is bourbon. This one's for y'all in the comment section right here. Burn that fat, Any old make... firewood. <laughs> now that it's it's safe for me to dip my hand in that pot, you can see I've created that sauce. I'm gonna add a little bit more game changer rub to that. Once your sugaru has cooked for a few minutes, add your sliced goose breasts, mushrooms, and apples into the pot. And add a touch of chicken stock and seasoning to bring the gravy together. I still have my fire on kind of medium heat, and all I want to do is just stir that in. And once it's up to like a good simmer, a good boil there, I'm going to shut it off and it's time to eat. Lastly, finish everything with green onions and eat the goose and gravy over steamed white rice.
start kind of wrapping around it. All right, hold on. It's my last hunt of the season, and it looks like we'll be getting exactly what we always ask for. A front blowing through during prime shooting hours can oftentimes lead to epic hunts. This is my last Louisiana duck hunt for the season. And then Louisiana has its second split, which is the first time in a long time they've had two splits. <clears throat> For years, we've come back to this camp after the season, week, two weeks, a month after, and the ducks are thick. Over the past few years, they're just taking their time migrating south, you know? They're showing up later and later, so this extra week, I think is gonna be good for Louisiana hunters because, you know, longer we can go, the better, it seems. Y'all want snacks? Hey, in here, in this bucket, we got Viannas, Pop-Tarts, every Debbie cake that was at the camp. We all right. I'd rather wear a garbage bag instead of a rain suit if I could be sponsored by Little Debbie. All right, we got our strawberries, we got our chocolates, and we got the Pop-Tarts. Now we're ready, buffet style. We have a little Debbie charcuterie board this morning. Heard two out front, two out front. Come on. Good shot, Jay. Yeah, good shot. God, that was terrible. Hard to get a quick 12. You don't want to convert the two. <laughs> nice shooting, boys. Now the flight's starting to turn on. It's a little later than it was yesterday. Right here, right here. Nice shooting, boys. Empty chamber. <laughs> <laughs> Jay and them are going crazy now. Hey, we're just a little slow to wake this morning. Ducks. Maybe they hung over this morning. That's probably what it is. So we took it easy. They, they were playing all last night, I bet. Cutting up with their partners, playing cards. Now they're running late. God! To a great start. Excellent shot. He did. Sean, great up. Sometimes you gotta just bang him, T. Ah, oh, he's dead. Yep, I'm going home. Get your Debbie in you, boy. Get your mind right. One coming in the front then? Possibly, maybe not. Don't matter, I'm not gonna hit it. Don't turn it into a little Debbie down on me. I need just one for my confidence. I missed him. Mouthful of brownie. <laughs> Can't even focus. So the flight's really slowed down this morning. We have about, I'm gonna call it around 9 a.m. So we got about 30 minutes left. We still need three or four birds for a limit. It'd be great to get a nice little group in and be done. Um, but so we just have to wait it out and let's see. In other news, Jay has graduated from Vienna Sausages in the Blind to Fancy Smoked Oysters. And I'm not mad at it because they're pretty delicious, but he's got a whole stockpile back here basically his own little bodega full of canned fish uh, in his console. So I'm sure he'll show y'all. Show y'all his supplies soon. <laughs> Run <them laughs> Stacked back, with uh, 10 fish. We ain't going hungry. Mm -mm. Hey. Hey. Y'all uh, done? Yeah, we done. All right. Um, get your ducks. 
picked up, and uh, we're probably going to bounce over there and come sit in that spot. All right. All right, get your ducks. You know what? I think I know why I'm struggling to hit the ducks. Because I've been shooting at bismuth, and I switched to a much faster shell today. Probably way out in front of them. This is where we turn it around. Spot number two calls for can of Vienna's number two. Hey, I hit a duck. Comeback kid over here. Switch spots, that boy's feeling a lot better, D. Started out kind of slow for us this morning, but you had some Vienna sausages in my little buddy. Turned out pretty good. All right, it's nine o'clock and the birds have, for the most part, stopped flying. We have some birds in the grass and a number of them on the water. We definitely don't have our limit, but we got enough to make it a really great hunt. Uh, but we got some work to do, so we're gonna hop out, um, hop out of this blind, unload, and start going pick up some ducks and then the decoys. Oh, that's a stud, Jay. Good mohawk too. We're short on a limit this morning, but we still had a fun hunt to close out my season. Now it's time to get back to the camp, clean up, and pack out for dry ground. Through the Blackwater bayous and in the dark Louisiana night, floats a duck camp, alive with the sounds of swamp pop and the smells of Cajun cooking. That's our paradise, but I believe that no matter where you are from, you likely have your own paradise in the outdoors that you share with the people you love. We had some incredible hunts, but what's sticking with me is everything else we shared with the people we met along the way. This season is an important reminder that despite our differences, when it comes to the outdoors, we're the same when we're hungry for the wild. Dude. 